just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, if you love him, come on, sing that together. Let us prepare our minds and our hearts for worship. The Lord is close to all who call on him, especially to all those who call on God in the spirit of truth. God responds to the praise, worship, and reverence of his people. And God hears the prayers and cries for help and rescues them from their trials and tribulations. The Lord protects all those who love him. Therefore, we will call on the name of the Lord and may everyone on earth bless and celebrate God's holy name. This is our call to worship. Let us join together in the affirmation of faith. What do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Let's bow our heads in prayer. My most dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. 
Thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to stand before you, Lord. Another opportunity, Lord, to recognize you for who you are, to pay homage to you, dear Heavenly Father, and just to recognize you for being a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God who made a way out of nowhere, a God who sits high and looks low, a God who is a God of love, a God of many chances, a God who is so worthy, so worthy to be praised. And Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, thank you, Lord, for, for your son, Jesus Christ, your son, Jesus, who died on Calvary, Lord, to give us another opportunity, Lord, for, uh, for, for eternal life, Lord. Thank you to Heavenly Father. Your son showed us the way, showed us the way to live in this world. Oh, this world that, that, that now, dear Heavenly Father, we, we just, just don't know sometimes which way to go. But if we stay in your word and put our hand in your hand, Lord, and let you lead and guide us, dear Heavenly Father, then we will make it through. You didn't say, Lord, that, the, that there will never be any hard times, that there will always be a bed of roses. But you did say to Heavenly Father that you would be right there for us. You said all that we have to do, Lord, was call on you. And you would answer, Lord. And dear Heavenly Father, I'm dependent on you to do just that. You say, Lord, that, that, that you, would, you would provide all our needs, all our needs, and you would also, Lord, to give us some, some of the things of our hearts, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, you also said that you would protect us. You would protect us, and you would guide us, and you provide for us, dear Heavenly Father. And for this, Lord, I, I want to thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, dear Heavenly Father, just, just been in the land of the living, dear Heavenly Father, and that you've given me another opportunity, dear Heavenly Father, to share your word with someone, to tell somebody about what thus said the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, that, that as we are on this teacher's journey, dear Heavenly Father, as, as, as there's so much going on in this world today, dear Heavenly Father, but your word said that there'll be wars and there'll be room of wars. You also said, dear Heavenly Father, that, that, that man would, 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 would see things that, uh, that uh, pass on for, for bad, that, that's for good, that's for bad, and, and so on and so on, dear Heavenly Father. But dear Heavenly Father, we, we should not be surprised, dear Heavenly Father, because you said these things would come about in your word. So, dear Heavenly Father, just let us stay in your word, because the more that we're in your word, dear Heavenly Father, the more that you would be in us, dear Heavenly Father, and the more that, dear Heavenly Father, that when it comes time, dear Heavenly Father, that, that, that it would be so imprinted on our brain and on our hearts that we would have instant recall when we need it, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless those, dear Heavenly Father, that, that do not know you for the pardon of those sins. Lord, bless those uh, that are in so much need, uh, need uh, shelter, uh, food, and, and, and clothing. And just those, dear Heavenly Father, who are prison bound, dear Heavenly Father, just remind us, be reminded, dear Heavenly Father, that you are everywhere. You are God. Of, you're omnipotent. You're omnipresent, dear Heavenly Father. You're omniscient, dear Heavenly Father. You are God that's everywhere and everything and all-knowing to us all. Dear Heavenly Father, please, dear Heavenly Father, bless the oppressed, bless those who are depressed, dear Heavenly Father. Let them know, dear Heavenly Father, there is hope. There is hope for a brighter day. There is a hope, no hope, 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 dear Heavenly Father. We would just focus on your word, dear Heavenly Father, and know, dear Heavenly Father, that change is going to come. Even, dear Heavenly Father, it's not until the time that, dear Father, when we cross over, dear Heavenly Father, and that our bodies are changed, dear Heavenly Father, and, uh, and we'll have new spiritual bodies, dear Heavenly Father, and just, uh, if we could just focus on that and to know, dear Heavenly Father, that time is winding down. So, dear Heavenly Father, just, just instill that hope into us, dear Heavenly Father, and let day by day, dear Heavenly Father, let us know each day we're getting a day closer and a day closer to that time. To that time, till we get to their place, so there will be no more suffering. There will be no more pain, Lord. That day there will be a, just a lot of joy and happiness as we praise you and then sing joys and praises to you each and every day, dear Heavenly Father. That's what I'm looking forward to, Lord. So, dear Heavenly Father, as we go through this day, bless the Heavenly Father, all the churches that are open under your name, dear Heavenly Father, the Christ is the head. 
Bless Philip C. and E. Church to Heavenly Father, and bless the pastor that you've set here, the shepherd that you've sh set here to Heavenly Father, the guide, the sheep to Heavenly Father. Thank you for he and his wife to Heavenly Father, and give him what he needs to Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless the one and bless him who's going to give the word today to Heavenly Father. Prop him up on each side that we need to be propped up to Heavenly Father, and let us hear the word from you. Dear Heavenly Father, please, dear Heavenly Father, just, 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 it's, uh, just thank you so much. Sometimes I, I just can't thank you enough. It, it, it just, uh, it's, it's hard for me to sometimes even get it out because, Heavenly Father, without tears coming down from my eyes, Heavenly Father, because you have been so good to me and good to my family, dear Heavenly Father. Even through teachers' journeys, dear Heavenly Father, you showed me that you were there. Even those times come when there, I, I thought there was no light at the end of the tunnel, the tunnel but you showed me, Lord, that the, the, the light had always been there. You never left. So let us be reminded, the light is still there. We're the ones that leave the light and that the Lord is still standing there with outstretched hands, welcoming those who come in to come in. So let our light so shine that others can see the Jesus that in us so that they want to follow him. So dear Heavenly Father, forgive us for our sins, sins that we have committed. And dear Heavenly Father, thank you again. So this is my prayer. Through Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I do thank God. You made a way when my back's were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way Cause you move mountains You cause walls to fall With your power for miracles There is nothing That's impossible And we're standing here Only because You made a way You made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over Oh!
say when our backs were against When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was all fine You made it, made it away And we're standing, and we're standing here Only because you made it Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God. Heavenly most eternal God, we come to you on this day saying thank you for another day's journey. Thank you for another opportunity just to be able to stand and proclaim your word. I ask you now, Lord, to use me as an instrument of your divine will and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. You are my strength and you are our Redeemer, and it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. I ask you to journey with me to the book of Psalms, Psalms 37, the book of Psalms number 37. The psalmist writes, do not fret because of the wicked, reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the printed text, do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligent, diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The word of God for the people of God. For a little while on this Lord's Day, we want to preach from the thought, patiently trusting God. Patiently trusting God. Today is the third Sunday in the month of February. February has been designated as Black History Month. But we know that one month cannot tell all the history and accomplishments of African Americans. Therefore, we must commit ourselves to celebrating our history, heritage, and culture 365 days a year. When we truly trust God, then we will not hesitate to do good works. Faith is about trust and action. If we truly trust God, then we would be committed to doing the right things regardless of what it looks like. I believe too often we hinder God working in our lives because we overthink stuff too much. What if this happens? What if that happens? But what if we decided to walk by faith and not by sight? Understand, I'm not talking about being foolish. I'm just suggesting that if we would patiently trust God, have faith in God, and do the right things, then we would live in the land and feed on God's faithfulness. If we would patiently trust God and do good, then God will provide and protect us. David goes on to say that when we delight in the Lord, then God will gives us the desires of our heart. For, for some people, their delight in God is motivated by what they can get out of God. Some, some people's commitment to God is predicated on wealth and riches. If God does this, I will do this. However, I believe when we delight in the Lord, our heart's desire will be to please God. 
To delight in God is to find pleasure in God and the things of God. When we get excited about just being in God and when we get excited about the things God is excited about, God notices. I find great joy just being in God. Being in God motivates me to do all I can to make the world a better place. Being in God is priceless. David goes on to say, commit everything you do to the Lord and trust God and God will help you. When we commit everything we do to the Lord, then everything we do glorifies God. To commit to God is to give ourselves totally to God. This means who we are and what we do is born out of our relationship to God and with God. Everything we do should be with God in mind. The old church would sing, God, my feet, Lord, while I run this race. God, my mind, Lord, while I run this race. God, my tongue, Lord, while I run this race. Because I don't want to run this race in vain. That they understood that everything they did, everything they said, everything they thought was connected to God. When we commit ourselves to the Lord, when we patiently trust God, then the text tells us God will act. Other translations say it like this, God will do, God will help you, God will bring it to pass, and God will do whatever needs to be done. God will vindicate us. God will judge those who have oppressed and marginalized us, and God will place the stamp of approval on our lives. Therefore, beloved, be still before the Lord and wait patiently on God. The King James Version says, rest mm, in God. When, when we are still and patient, it is a sign of maturity. Experience has taught me that God is always at work. Even when we do not see anything happening, God is at work. The only thing we must do is patiently trust God and, and be ready to move when God says move. When we are still and when we wait patiently on God, we will inherit the land. To, to inherit the land is not passive engagement. It doesn't mean we're just sitting around waiting, but it's active involvement. Our English understanding of inherit is to receive something without active engagement or receiving something without putting in the work. However, the Hebrew word for inherit is yarash, which is to drive out, to take over, to possess the land. This is an active engagement. This active engagement is not about us fighting, but it is about us positioning ourselves to receive what God has for us. When we patiently trust God, when we delight ourselves in God, when we commit ourselves to God and position ourselves before God, we can experience all that God has. We will be able to experience what God does best, and that is to bless us abundantly. When I talk about God blessing us abundantly, then I, I come thinking in my mind, we don't have to chase after blessings, but blessings chase after us. Somebody ought to shout on that. We, we don't have to chase after blessings when we are right position with God, but blessings will chase after us. When we put ourselves in the right position, God will act on our behalf. When we patiently trust God, God will do in us, for us, and through us those things we cannot do for ourselves. In 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, there is a story about Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah who found himself in a difficult situation. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and others came against Judah in battle. Jehoshaphat called an assembly of all the people, the youngest to the oldest in all of Jerusalem. The people humble themselves before God. The people position themselves before God and God responded. God told them that the battle is not theirs, but it is the Lord's. 
when we are in the right position, then we can wait patiently in God and we can patiently trust God to act on our behalf. See, David had to learn how to patiently trust God. David had to go through some good days and some bad days. I am sure David had some nights when he walked the floor in the midnight hour drinking tears for water, but he learned how to patiently trust God. David proclaimed that I was young, but now I'm old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. David learned how to patiently trust that God will take care of him. David discovered through trial and error how to patiently trust God. When we patiently trust God, we will discover that God will, I said God will, take care of us. When we patiently trust God, we will discover that God will be our light on our path and a lamp to our feet. When we patiently trust God, God will give us the strength and the courage to overcome and endure all of life's challenges. Life has taught me how to patiently trust God, how to patiently wait on God, because through all of my trials and tribulations, God has kept me. God has built a fence of protection around me. God has been my way out of no way. I don't know about you, but I've learned how to trust God in all situations because God has kept me. And because God has kept me, I have learned to just trust God in all situations. There were times when I wanted to turn away and walk away, but God kept me. God kept me on the right track. God kept pressing me to do the right thing. And look at me now. God is continuing to shower down blessings upon me. I might not be rich. I might not have everything I want to have, but God keeps on keeping me. And I'm glad about it. That's why I can shout hallelujah in the midst of whatever was going on in the midst of COVID. I can shout hallelujah. In the midst of sickness, I can shout hallelujah. In the midst of bills keep coming every day, I can shout hallelujah because God will, God will take care of me. God has kept me for 58 long years and I'm so glad that God has kept me and I've learned how to patiently trust God through it all. I'm sure there's somebody out there today that can testify to the fact that God has kept you. Because God has kept you, you have learned how to patiently trust God. This is the word today. To God be the glory. I don't know about you, but all of us go through some trials and tribulations in our lives. We all go through some ups and downs and, and life has a way of taking through us through some changes and turnarounds. But the good thing to know is that through it all, God keeps us. God, God continues to hold us in the, in the, in the hollow of his hand. God continues to, to, to hide us under his outstretched wings. God continues to, to keep us. And because God, because God continues to keep us, we can patiently trust God because God has proven God's self time and time and time again. We have a history with God and because of our history with God, we have patiently learned to trust God. I don't know what your situation is today, but I, 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 I ask you, patiently trust God. Patiently believe that God is going to turn your situation around. Just get in the right position with God. Just, just, just get yourself in right position with God. Get in a right relationship with God. Get in a right relationship with your neighbor, with others. Because when we do that, we put ourselves in a position where God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we will have, not have room enough to receive it all because we were in right relationship and right position with God. Let us pray. Heavenly, most eternal God, we thank you today.
There may be somebody listening today, God, that, that is crying out to you right now, asking you, God, that I need you now. God, I ask you to keep them. I ask you to hold them. I ask God that you just wrap your loving arms around them and let them know that in the midst of what they're going through, they're not alone, but that God is there with them to hold them, to strengthen them, to give them the courage to keep marching on to see what the end's going to be. God, we love you. God, we trust you through it all. And we're patiently, patiently standing still so that we can experience the salvation of God. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like you're working, but God, I, we, we've learned that you can work behind the scenes and all of a sudden something will happen. The extraordinary will pop out of nowhere. This lets us know, God, that you're always at work. Lord, we thank you and we pray for all those who are watching today and all those who need a breakthrough. Lord, I just ask you to do something extraordinary in their lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've been burdened and I've been tried. I've been hurting with pain inside. I've had trouble on every hand. So many days I could barely stay. My hands got tired of holding on. Felt like I just could not go on. Every time I almost let go, God has kept me. Every time I almost let go, God has kept me. There's been times when I could not see. I had to cry myself to sleep I've had people to walk away I've been put down for my mistakes And there have been times when I felt alone I've had to walk some lonely roads But every time I almost let go God has kept me And every time I almost let go God has kept me No oh, oh, No oh, oh. And there have been times every now and then I wanted to throw the towel in Didn't want to cry, didn't want to pray Throw my hands in the air, just walk away. God never lets me, never let me go. His voice and mercy always held me close. Every time I almost let go, God has kept me. And every time I almost let go, God has kept me. Receive the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in each and every one's life. And all of God's children said, Amen. 
Greetings, Philip CME Church family. It is truly a blessing for you to join us on this virtual worship experience. We thank you for watching us on Facebook Live or YouTube. And, and if you are watching us on YouTube, I ask you to subscribe to our channel. Amen. But thank you so very much. In the way of announcements, we invite you to be a part of our uh, Black History program, which will be next Sunday uh, virtually. And uh, the Board of Board of Christian Education is planning a magnificent program, so I ask you to please be a part of that. Our schedule is to return back to in-person worship services on the first Sunday of March. Now, when we come back in, we will still continue to social distance, wear masks, and practice good hygiene. Um, and I would also invite you to give to this ministry. If you would like to give, you can go to our website, which is www www.philipcmechurch.org and there you will find tabs for PayPal and Givelify. If you would like to mail in your gift, know that you can mail it to Philip CME Church, P.O. Box 3917, Huntsville, Alabama 35810. Know that we are praying for you because we are Phillips. To God be the glory. Well, well, well. <laughs> Try 